In this section, we'll look at how to provide additional context to your events, and this will be a good lesson on how the event helps you understand the exception in context of its execution or runtime environment. And this is what really sets Sentry apart from just seeing the error alone in a log file. It enhances your ability to reason about your program and debug better. When you see it in Sentry.io, it will be that much more actionable, especially if you add your own customization. So let's start with tags. These are all reportable in Discover, even the custom tags that we're going to set. So let's take a look at an event in Python and the tags there. So this happened 30,000 times, which means it was the same stack trace in all those, but the values of the tags may have been different. For instance, what was the host or container that was running this Python program? What was the release of my code that this event happened in? Or maybe what was the URL defined in my router that this happened in? Let's see how to set a tag. You can call the set tag method, and you can do this from anywhere in your code as long as the SDK has been initialized. The scope object just represents your context and it holds useful info that gets sent along with the event. The SDK is intelligent enough to start building the scope right when the SDK is initialized and it builds info based on your routes, controllers, and the host and other things. So what are some good examples for custom tags? Custom tags are great for things that Sentry cannot be aware of. For instance, something about, say, your business logic or who your customers are. And that's something we used in our JavaScript event earlier. We set our own custom tag called customer type because this is not something whose value is hard-coded. It's loaded dynamically. Another example for something you could use a custom tag for is a feature flag, which could indicate that the customer's user experience has some feature enabled or not. You could also use them in general for anything mission critical that's going on. The URL tag here can reveal what code is involved on this web page where the error was thrown, as well as the release. If you click on releases here, then you could figure out what were all the commits and files that were updated. The stack trace obviously reveals, reveals the line of code and file that the error was thrown in. And while this isn't a custom tag, which is reportable in Discover, the file name is still reportable in Discover. So we'll see in the next section a report on error counts by file names. So another cool feature with tags is setting a transaction ID. And this is something for a design pattern you can use called tracing. It's basically a technique in Sentry you can use. So I set a transaction ID on this JavaScript event when I go to make an HTTP request to my backend server. And then in the backend event, in the Python code, we actually absorb that tag out of the headers, we parse it, and then we set it as a tag in the backend. So the benefit of doing this is that you can now see all of your events that share a transaction ID. So you can trace it from front end to back end and other microservices that get associated as well. So we have documentation on this technique here. We also have a blog article on it here. So next piece of additional context would be breadcrumbs. You can add a breadcrumb using this method and you can give it a category message and level. Think of this as like a timestamp of something happening leading up to that event, that error when it happens. So some good examples are state changes or user authentication. Let's take a look at some more examples. So in my JavaScript app, as I added items to my shopping cart that we saw earlier in the demo, I wanted to collect a breadcrumb for every time I click that button that adds it to the cart. So this is important because in its absence, you would have to rely on looking at this. And this isn't very friendly or readable because I might not remember what all my hundreds of divs or buttons to re refer to if I wrote them months ago. Another good example for breadcrumbs is indicating the start or stop of any lifecycle method for a component in something like Angular, React, Android, or iOS. And you can still use them in backend code for indicating anything at all that's going on, like a module being loaded or services getting connected and so forth, logins, logouts, or anything mission critical. The last piece of context we'll look at is something called the extra or the additional information. So this is great for a piece of object form data that you want included if an error occurs. So in my example here, I set the additional data every time I add something to the shopping cart. And what I actually set is an immutable copy of that object data. So here was the demo. When we click buy, 
each time we just keep updating that extra with it with whatever the current state of that card is and this is important because what the user sees in the ui could be different than what's in javascript and memory or even than what's in the database in the next section we'll take a look at discover and its reporting capabilities